Hello, KL7L. Um, today I've been repairing uh, this uh, badged Kenwood KPS 15 uh, power supply, switch mode power supply, 13.8 volts at 23, 25 amps peak. And this is badged and rebadged under various manufacturers, including Samlax. And um, I'd last used this when I was working in Singapore, living in Singapore as 9 Victor 1 Lima Foxtrot. And I want to convert it back to 110 volts. But I did a check on the components and uh, found some oddities. Now you can see these three capacitors here. They're part of the filtering system after the signals are inverted, changed uh, and brought back down to uh, DC. They're filtered and there's filters and there's toroid filters and ferrite you can see here. Um, but I noticed that the, uh, the these three capacitors looked a bit odd. And when I um, looked at the top of the capacitors, oh dear. This stuff is uh, nasty um, acid that was leaking out. I don't know if you can, if I can get the focus to work. Yeah, maybe not. Let's try that. Let's try the focus. You see the bulging section on the top of the capacitor? And the bottom looks like dodgy. The pins have moved and again, a bit bulgy. Sure signs that the capacitors failed. And there's three of them of this type, which uh, are the uh, Jamicon. Uh, this is a 25 volt DC working at 2200 microfarads and uh, yeah I tested it and they all have high resistance on my capacitance tester. So out they came and I replaced them with these uprated versions which are uh, again 2200 microfarad but 35 volts bigger and uh, hopefully they'll work again. Uh, for another 10, 15 years. Um, there's a video out, I think, from Samlex that shows you how to change this unit uh, from uh, 240 uh, back to 110. And if I can remember where it is, oh yeah, there is a strap, a strap that goes in across these pins at the back here. And I'm gonna put those back in one there and without sort of losing focus the other pin sits in there that's really not easy to see especially with my big fat fingers anyway now the unit is now strapped for 110 volts working and the only other thing i need to do now is change the fuse 115 i need a 6.3 and uh, there was a smaller, uh, lower value one, was it 4 amp, for 220, 230 volt working. I am going to um, add some additional decoupling to this unit because it is still noisy at um, 137 kilohertz, so you know, the hand band down at 2200 meters. And I'm going to add some more low value or high value capacitors that have uh, ERC, ESR values for ELF and sort of VLF and and uh, see if I can cut down the noise, the ripple, the RF that is still left after the conversion process. So this again is rebadged under various names, but they all look the same. <laughs> and I think Kenwood has just shoved its name on. Uh, interesting thing about these capacitors, um, Kenwood had uh, it's got a bit of a bad name when it comes to electrolytics. The TS 850s, I've got a couple of them there in the shack. Uh, and a lot of them um, have had, with the older style capacitors, failures of the capacitors and they've leaked onto the circuit boards and caused track issues. The stuff is really quite corrosive and nasty, difficult to get off and repair. So um, anyway, this is another example. I don't think I've actually known about the capacitor issues. Um, definitely stressed out, that's for sure. So, and I haven't been running this hard. I mean, I, I haven't had this power supply on for, I don't know, 10 or 12 years. So maybe it's just, uh, they've worn out. 
Anyway, 73 is from a very murky and rainy Alaska. Do you want to see out the door? Yeah, go on. And call me a liar. <laughs> it's actually stopped raining for a moment. Seven threes, KL7L.